Yes, I guess. Okay, so I'm Kriko Mikey. I've been here a couple, I've done something a couple times. Um, one was spoken word poetry, and the other was rap. That was last year, and I've been away for a while. Anyways, good to be back. Um, how many of you know Sarah and Phil K? Yeah? Not too many people. Anyways, they're spoken word poets, and I've been inspired by them, so that's how I got started doing my own. And they were actually here, not exactly here, but at Stanford. And so I got to see them alive, and I was really excited. So I was like, oh, I have to do it again. And then I was um, looking at the definition of spoken word poetry. And it's actually not just um, performing a, a, a poetry out loud, but you have to write it in mind you know, with the audience sitting in front of you. So technically, what I did last year was a spoken word poetry, because I just acted out a written poem, but I didn't write it in mind to speak it out loud. So I rewrote this poem I wrote in college a long time ago, and specifically you guys in mind sitting in front of me. So it's titled, Printing a Poem. You're not only shaping the wood block, but the air around it as well. My art teacher once said, in Printmaking 101, the chisel decisively separating the positive space from the negative space. Well, the art of spoken word poetry is just alike. I'm not only shaping the spoken words, but the unspoken words as well, like what I had for breakfast, how many boyfriends I had, how many biopsy tests I had, and about the compliments received before getting up here on the stage. And there's a clear-cut reason for speaking as well as for not speaking like it's not quite relevant or it's too personal, it's too painful or I don't know how to put it into words yet. And some things are better unsaid so you can work your imagination. And, uh, print making 101 again. Once carving is done, the wood block is ready to print. So reward the labored block rich with ink. The juicy uncarved surface kisses the virgin paper, leaving a passion mark, while the carved space keeps its distance, the hollow distills its depth to her white. So it is with printing at home. You are the virgin paper, I the wood block, or more specifically, this the precious moment you're rendering to me right now is the virgin paper, for your life is a collection of moments in which each page comes a fresh life version, and the prepared poem in my head, the unseen script, is the carved wood block. And my voice, my emotion, my presence here are the ink, and my emotion and my energy are its colors. So your shared existence and my solid presence here, presence meet here, only once in this exact manner. Print making 101 again. You're not only to see the printed image, but the block and blood behind it as well. My art teacher once said, yeah, I remember about those annoying slivers and accidental cuts. One of my classmates slashed her palm pretty badly. But the showcase of the class exhibit will never give away which print was made with no scars or the deepest. So hidden are the scars, scars of the poets you see. Like I'm not going to tell you about my divorced parents or my deceased ex or the jobs I lost. Well. No metaphor is perfect, neither is this one. For you, the audience, are not blank paper. You're a person, too, with a life and scars. And printing a poem like this makes me feel extremely raw. So different from just posting a poem on my wall or my blog. I, the wood block body, facing the faces of real people with bodies, blood, and scars. Your scars might be deeper than mine. 
Your unspoken words might be louder than mine. Your pages might be thicker than my block. <coughs> you, the audience pages, are absorbent and observant, drinking my ink, letting it sink. My unspoken words and hidden sparks may penetrate and resonate with yours deep down unknown. So I stand here vulnerable and humble, hoping that the passion mark I leave here was worth rendering your precious moment the version page. <laughs>